Scripture. Go back to Scripture. This is going to play during lunch. So you can revisit this, and Sherilyn can make copies for it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's a great thing, Sherilyn, Jesse. They all put all these pictures together and got everything together. So if you'll stand with me, and we got scriptures from John, Joshua, the fourth chapter, 1 through 7, an altar of remembrance is the name of the day. When the whole nation had finished crossing the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, Choose twelve men from among the people, one from each tribe, and tell them to take up twelve stones in the middle of Jordan, right where the priest stood. Carry them over with you and put them down in the place where you stay tonight. So Joshua called together the twelve men he had appointed from the Israelites, one from each tribe, and said to them, Go over before the ark of the Lord your God into the middle of the Jordan. Each of you should take a stone and a shoulder, and according to the number of tribes of Israelites, to serve as a sign among you. In the future, when your children ask you, what did these stones mean? Tell them, the flow of the Jordan was cut before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. And when it, when it crossed the Jordan, the waters of Jordan were cut off. And these stones are to be a memorial to the people of Israel forever. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for your blessing upon it. And I ask you, Father, to bless this time in your word. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Just for a few minutes, we're going to leave kids in here. The ones that are in here, we're just going to leave you in here. On the first of the month, we're going to try to start just keeping the kids, let them experience uh, grown-up church. I know it may be a little bit of frustration for parents, grandkids, but it also gives our workers a chance to be in here during a service during that, that week. Um, we also, as we, this church started, uh, you saw in the newsletter, I put out, his, I love history, and I could sit and talk to history today because I think the only reason you stand where you are today is because of history. That's why you'll see in the Bible, you'll see so much history. And every time you'll see in the scriptures, you'll see in Psalms where David is reminded of the horse and the rider is thrown to the sea. You'll see where Moses wrote and remembered everybody. You'll see every time you're in the, in the scriptures, time and time again, they reminded them where they've come from, where they are, and don't forget this because that is your future. That's a biblical precedent in the way it's been set up. And so I look at this and I'm sitting there going, God, what is it that you want for us today? I look at the three guys, I, I, and I wrote in the newsletter, because I got really thinking about that. In the day in which they traveled, they traveled by horseback, didn't have cars, 19 miles down the road to Ebenezer United Methodist Church. I don't know, unless some of you that were here, that were there, I really don't know why or how they got there, whether it was just they were visiting somebody down there or they had heard about a revival that was going on at the crossroads down there towards more crossroads, towards Montevallo. They heard about a revival. They go down there. They find themselves in the midst of what at that time was a, what they called a Brush Harbor revival. You can still go out there and sit at a little white church sitting out there in the clapboard church sitting out there in the middle of the field. I've been there. I've stood around and, and kind of looked and wondered, uh, you know, what drew them here other than the Spirit of God? And that's what God has done, and that's what you heard the testimonies today. What drew you here? What was it about this place we call New Hope? It is about the New Hope. It is about the Spirit of God drawing together. So for whatever reason, God drew three guys down there at A. Acton. I don't even know what his first name was, and you can remind me later, those that knew him. This is 1828. I'm just joking. Nobody here knew him. For those that are younger, you just don't know. And so and you, got, and you got Needham Lee and you got William Meredith, who actually was one of the first, first presidents of the University of Montevallo. Um, I look at this, and I'm going, okay, God, what was it about these three guys? But he chose them for that time and that purpose in order for them to be there in 1828 at this revival, at this moment. They got convicted of sins. They got changed life. In those days, it wasn't just a prayer. I'm sure they had mourner's benches out there, and they had times where they'd be on their face. And if you read anything about the Great Awakening, the revival, what they would do is the preacher would get up and preach. You think I preach long. They would preach for hours. I mean, we're talking about a projected meeting where and when they start preaching, it would be an hour and a half before they got done. Mmm, y'all got it good now. Don't get me wrong. And you find that here's these guys that are down there, and they get convicted of their sins, and then they trek back. And you're talking 19 miles. We don't, they, didn't, they may have had the horse trail that was going down Highway 31, but that's what they had, a wagon trail. They had to follow their senses to get back here to this place. You think, well, that's no big deal. But that was something that God took them on their journey. We're still on our journey today, folks. We find that this church, and there was many places, if you're ever want to be fascinated with history, you can kind of trek around the valley where this church has been located. It was down in Indian Springs at one time at the school. It was called Masonic Hall because the building was destroyed out here by a storm. Uh, there was a building over on, the one that was destroyed was actually on Valleydale across the street from uh, the Skinner's. Uh, place that, uh, there's a cemetery still over there called Bailey Springs. It was located over there at one time. 
Uh, Randy, you remember that? No, I'm just kidding. That was back way before your time. Uh, you find that in all of these occasions, this church moved around. But here's the fascinating thing. As I was looking at history, the church wasn't the building, nor is it now. The church wasn't of brick and stone, nor is it now. Because every time, it said it started with a prayer meeting, 1828. You'll see we put the, the, the cornerstone out here. It's on this. It's out, that's right outside there, so I'll tell you a little bit about that in just a second. And that's the cornerstone from the old building. But it says it was established in 1829. The actual church was organized in 18, it said 1828, but 1829 when the actual church on the first Sunday of March, and March 1st. And you'll find that we stand here today because we have a history of people that had their lives changed by Jesus Christ. Never forget that. A church is just a, a, this is a building, but a church is only as strong as those who have been converted and changed in Christ Jesus. There is a change that took place in their life. They came back and they prayed and they said, let's start, let's get a church started. They went from house to house praying. They saw a revival. A few of the pivotal points you'll remember, you won't remember, but you'll see in history, you'll see that the, the church of stones and thing got busted up and broken many times. Log cabins, they built, got broken up. There were times in the past where you see there was a revival. And what I remember uh, Kate Lacey telling me about a uh, revival here in the 30s. And they, they would actually get there were some that got baptized in Bishop Creek. You don't really want to do that today. There was a few of those that did. Yeah, I remember Kate telling me that there was times that, that uh, you know, and then Papa Dale could tell me about looking down and seeing the dogs and stuff that you could, James, you can remember that. You'd see the dogs in between the cracks in the floor of the old church over there um, that was underneath the building and stuff. But I have found over the years the buildings have changed. The people have turned over. There are things that have happened, but it's not about the building. It is about the message. That's what transformed the three guys that went down to Montevallo, the message. It was something that changed their lives forever. They came back to say, let's make a difference in this valley. Here's the thing that I, I really feel like we are to be reminded of, is it is about the message. It's about what God has done. And I love, like I say, I love history. I read it. I look at it. And I'd say, God, you're doing some awesome things in this place. We listen to the testimonies even today, and, 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 I, and I feel like it's very important for our younger people to hear because they will give testimony of your life. They will say, I saw what this person did. It changed my life. You hear about the ones that taught Sunday school here. You hear about the ones that are past preachers here. They hear about the ones that I can speak of, and, and I can tell you I am the minister today because I have interacted with the folks of this church and have helped me in so many different ways. I found that there is so much to that, and I want to know that, God, this is what you are up to in this day, but it's about the message that has transformed so many people's lives. One of the things that we did, we put this rock garden outside, and, and, and we're going to use this here in the days ahead, but we're also going to use it. I did not expect the rain today. It kind of came in on us, so it's kind of messing up what we had planned. But you find that we had a snow here one year. We got in here, and it snowed, and and on March, and, and we have this anniversary celebration. Um, this just means we're going to eat well and stay inside a little bit more. We plan this rock garden because one of the things that has a red tea there in Joshua, because I think history is good, but I also think it points to the future. And when I read to you there in Joshua, one of the things that they did was they were crossing over, and we use this crossing over Jordan as a song we sing about going to heaven. I'm crossing over Jordan, going to see my Jesus. You know, this crossing over Jordan was really that change of their, everything that's going to happen in their lives. They had left Egypt behind. They had left their past behind. And when they said, they said, you get the ark, you put your foot in the, the river Jordan, you put your, once the, the priest put their foot, it said the river will roll back. They got to see a miracle. It said it just piled the waters back and said they were again to walk across. This generation had not walked across the Red Sea. That generation had died off. That was a story they heard about. Now God was doing new miracles for them. He says, I'm about to show you something that I am truly God. But he says, here's what I want you to do, is when the priests step into the river, the waters are going to roll back. You're going to cross, even upon dry land. And then when you get to the other side, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take 12 stones, and I want you to build an altar, one for each tribe. And then when your people come back, it says, I want you to bring them back here. It's kind of like a pilgrimage. You can see throughout all the Old Testament, every time they had an encounter with God or God did something, they would build an altar. 
You can look in yourself. Every time God was up to something, said build an altar. Even, and I read this, and I just want to give this to you because this is what, uh, it was written back here in Exodus. They give us some instructions even upon an altar. And I'll do this real quick. It says, and this is what, right after the Ten Commandments, he says, and, and they tell us how to make an altar. In Exodus 20, it says, Make an altar of the earth for me. Sacrifice on it your burnt offerings and fellowship offerings, your sheep, your goats, your cattle. Now, we're not going to do that today. We've already got some roasted turkey, so we're going to eat that, some smoked turkey. He said, And wherever I cause the name to be honored, I will come to you and I will bless you. If you make an altar of stones for me, do not build it with dressed stones or you will defile it. In other words, don't make it fancy. He said, Or you'll defile it and don't use a tool on it. And then he goes on and says, and don't use steps going up to it unless your nakedness be exposed. And I thought that was fascinating. I know they wore long robes and stuff, and he said, you don't want to be in this high place. But he said, and, I, and I'll interpret this a little bit for me. Don't bring your flesh to this thing. Build an altar unto me that honors me. So that's what they did. They got on the other side of Jordan. They said, okay, each one of you 12 tribes, you put this altar, you put this stone down. And they said, I want you to be able to bring your children back, and I want you to remind them that God is the God of miracles. He's the God that has built the foundations of this world, but he's a miraculous God. I don't want us to forget that we came out of revival. I don't want us to ever forget that. I don't want us to forget as a church because in this day and time where everybody wants to be loved and accepted, I want, us to, I want us to understand that is the message of the cross, but the message of what God desires even of today is that we proclaim Jesus Christ and him crucified, and for us that we've got to be changed. That's the whole message of New Hope Church and where it began. No, we never forget that. We come to this place where we never forget the message of the cross. Just like when those days when they walked their children back to the Jordan, they says, come, let me show you. This is the stone that our forefathers put down here because the miracle that God did. But not only that, we can see the Jericho fell, Ai fell. We can see the land and the conquest that God gave us this land. You know, he reminded them, he says, look, when I give you this land, do not forget. Do not forget me. He says, you're going to go into this land that's going to be so blessed. You're going to have everything you've ever wanted, but do not forget me. That's a warning we can take as a church. When those guys came back to this valley, they started meeting with people. You know what their message probably was? I don't know. I want to tell you how Jesus changed my life. I want to tell you what happened to me down by the crossroads here. I want to tell you what happened to me at this brush harbor. I want to tell you this message that has transformed me. This is the message that they said. And, and Joshua was encouraging them. He says, when you bring your kids back, tell them the message. The message is not the rocks. The message is the rocks stands for God's power that has happened. The message is not going to be the rocks even in this. You'll find this is right outside the door here. The message is not in the rocks. The message is that God has transformed me. God has made a change. Why is that important? Because the world is longing to hear that message still. We're in greatest need of revival that we've ever seen. This is a revivalistic birth church. When we come back to our roots, our roots are, if we lose that message, if we lose that desire to see people come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, that's why we have this cross up here. We're praying for people to come to Jesus, come back to Jesus, to get free of addictions. That's the message we can never forget. Or else we would just come a stone and brick building that everybody can come to. That is not the church. The church is what Peter calls it, lively stones, built upon the cornerstone of Jesus Christ. So when we come back to this church, we come back to Jesus saying, God, you're the lively stone. You're the cornerstone that has made us who we are. It says, as you come to him, living stone, the living stone rejected by men but chosen by God and precious to him, you also like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For as Scripture says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to all of you who believe, the stone is precious, but to those who believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the capstone, the stone that causes men to stumble and the rock that causes them to fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. We find ourselves, and as I look at this, that Jesus, first and foremost, was our forefathers' cornerstone. It's what they built upon. Jesus had transformed their life. Their message was, when they got back to this valley, you can have it too. 
It's that simple. When we find ourselves, and what we talked about, and this is one of Larkin's ideas was to do this, what we talked about even today, was we built this little stone garden out there. It is a reminder to us of this 190, 190 years. When you tell somebody 190 years, Neil's with us today. It's fascinating, isn't it, Neil? Neil's been in this valley almost 190 years. And uh, all y'all know Neil. But, I mean, it's fascinating. The people of this valley is truly fascinating. But this church being in this valley in this, for 190 years, when I tell people that, they're going, what? That is the message of the cross going forth all those many years. The reason you are here is because of the message of the cross. You are a part of that message. So here's what I'd ask you to do today is a lively stone, a living stone today. We're going to come at the end of this service, and we're going to close out in prayer. We've got a meal that's going to happen in just a few moments. What our idea was is we're all going to take one of these stones, and we're going to thank the Lord for our past. Thank you, Lord. But reminded of our future. We're going to say our message and a reminder of the message, that we are that message of the cross, that we are that living altar for God. Our lives are the altar before him. That when people come back to these stones, not just these, when they come back, we can tell them the message of the cross, but I'm a reminder that I am that living sacrifice before God. I am that altar in which my life is offered up to him. That it's not about these stones necessarily, but it is a reminder even today. And what we're going to do is we're going to have everybody go out and drop one of these stones in the circle out there as a reminder and just pray for the 190 years of this church and the more to come. Now the rain's coming, so what we're going to do today is I will ask you, as you come today, we'll take one of these rocks, and if you don't want to go out and place it out there yourself, just leave it here and we'll place it later. But I do want you to come and pray. Say, Lord, and we're going to pray together as we close. Strengthen my message of the cross. Let me be changed. Let my history be that that this next generation can build on. Let me be that person that can have that testimony that everybody says, this is what it means to be a Christian. Just as they did Joshua, he said, don't make a fancy, nothing fancy. He said, don't make a fancy thing. But this is a reminder. This is our message. We are the lively stones, the living stones that proclaim this message. Even Jesus told him, he says, look, and when they were crying, Hosanna said, hush your disciples, hush these people up. He said, if I hush them up, the stones will cry out. I look at these stones, they, they're, they're not nothing fancy, just river rocks. They haven't been hewed by man's hands. They're made and formed by God. I want to remind you that you're made in God's image, that your life is that testimony. You take one of these rocks, and you might get your hands a little dusty. You take one of these rocks, you can place it out there and say, Lord, I want to be a part of what you're doing in these next years to come. I want to renew my commitment to you to proclaim the message of the cross, whether it's standing with Debbie at Oak Mountain Middle School or whether it's somebody in this valley that does not know Jesus Christ. I want to renew my commitment to you, Lord, because I can sing the praises of the people of the past, but I'm going to tell you, Nanny's not here, Virginia's not here, Brother Bright's not here. We're here. We are the living stones that are the testimony and the altar in which God is speaking today, the altar of our lives. How many of us would say, I need to renew a commitment to the Lord? It's not about making sure this church goes on 190 years because I'll be honest with you, whatever we, little bit we can add, I look back and there's been probably times where this thing has gotten really lean at this church, but then God has expanded. But it's all been around the message. When we renew ourselves to the message, then this church expands. All these rocks represent today is me. I'm a living stone. I want to cry out, Lord. I want to be a part of what you're building in the future. You can place them up here on around here we'll pick them up and take them out later if the rain lets up you can take it out yourself and what we're doing is we're going to place and when we walk by this i want us to say lord thank you for the 190 years but help me be a part of this kingdom and to proclaim the message of the cross and being that living stone i want to be a reminder of that so here's what i want you to do let's stand with me before we go eat because we're going to go next door to the next building pray blessings over the food before we go over to the next building and have a meal, I love we've got testimony of all the people that have passed. I love, man, we stand tall because of that. But now it's on us. It's on us. This generation right now 
It's on us. I love that we've had folks that have been influential in our life, but it's on us. There are people in your family, there are people in my family, there are people in this community who do not know Jesus Christ. I'm asking you to step up and say, Lord, I will be that living stone in which you can build your altar upon. And each day, I'm that living sacrifice. I will do what you ask me to do. That's what it represents. You say, that's just symbolism. That's all it was when he took them down to the Jordan. You remember what God has done? I want you to be reminded of what God is doing in your life. I want to be a part of that. I want to be a part of what you're up to, God. So we're just going to place, you got a stone, you take it out of this bucket here, we're going to place it in out here. When you walk by that, I want you to be reminded. I want you to pull your kids aside and say, look, this church has been here 190 years, but I'm believing it's going to be even greater in the days ahead. I'm believing for that. Take a stone, you pray, you say, Lord, whatever you want me to do, I'm committed. I want that to be our testimony because I'm telling you, when those people would walk by that heap of rocks, that's all it was until somebody told them the story. Somebody told them the story. Let me tell you what, Grandpa, tell me, what is that heap of rocks? Let me tell you what it was. So I invite you, as we close out in prayer, you can take it, take it with you, put it over. Or you can wait. <laughs> <laughs> You can get baptized while you're doing this if you want to. We believe in sprinkling, but that's pouring. That may be more Methodist. It's raining so hard. Well, we're going to close out. I'm going to pray for the blessings of the Lord. You don't have to do this. You're going, that's just dumb. I don't want to do it. That's fine. But I want you to be reminded of the message of the cross of nothing else.